Hey everyone, testing is everybody able to hear me? Hey testing, is, is everyone able to hear me? Yamilu, nice to see you, man. <laughs> hey, nice to see you here. <laughs> right uh david nice to see you too right um cool cool a lot of familiar names actually right uh guys when you're replying you can actually put two and you can select to everyone um right so if you sometimes you want to see all the messages uh of everyone else you know you can do that so um so uh, people know what you're replying or asking right good stuff man hey vincent nice to see you uh, who attended my webinar earlier today i'm just curious uh, any of you guys happen to attend my uh, webinar earlier today, right? I think a few of you guys might have. But nice to see everyone here. Um, okay, we got Michael, right, from tuning in from Nigeria, got Yaya, all right, Ezra, good stuff. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. All right, thanks for tuning in. All right, today is uh, gonna teach you a pretty uh, interesting topic, right? Um, the sound is back, all right. Just testing, is everyone able to hear me properly? Um, is it loud and clear? Okay, okay, good stuff, good stuff, All right? Uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone, All right? Uh, loud and clear, loud and clear, very perfect, <laughs> very nice. Okay, so um, uh, thanks for tuning in to today's session, right? Uh, we will be touching on the Wyckoff trading strategy today. Um, could I just get a gauge, um, a show of hands maybe, who uses the Wyckoff trading strategy um, here uh, does anyone know how to use the wyckoff strategy anyone tried it out before okay all right um seems like a pretty new topic to um quite a number of you guys okay okay it's somewhat complicated it's pretty complicated yeah um it is one of the more complicated ones uh around i agree right i'll show you guys how to use it effectively so not just using it, but to really kind of uh, use it effectively, right? A lot of it is based on supply and demand. I think Wyckoff accum accumulation distribution, right? So um, a lot of fancy terms um, that they have, right? But it all kind of boils back down to um, supply and demand, right? I, I can show you guys, right? I think recently I just took another of this, like um, I, I like taking this uh, different uh, trading competitions, Right. Um, the most recent one I took, I think it I did quite well. Let me see if I have it over here. You have it in slide, right? Um, quite okay actually. I can show you over here, right? A uh, recent one I took, right? Uh, just uh, gave me an eight percent target to hit, right? Um, yep, I hit the the full eight percent. Uh, hit five days, almost zero drawdown. Actually, twelve cents drawdown, right? Because I needed to put in some random trades to hit the minimum number. A right, really good risk reward, right? hit the profit in record time in five days right actually in two days but i managed to uh they, they require to hit it in kind of like five days right um instead of normal 35 days right so i i want to share with you i i did it mainly with um a supply and demand right fibonacci market correlation market structures a lot of the things which are similar to what uses, right and today i'm actually covering the topic uh because peggy is not around to do it Right, um, and I'm going to give you my own professional take on how you can implement this in a more effective way. Right, a lot of people look at Wyckoff, right, smart money concepts, and they get a little bit what's the word for it? They get a little bit paralyzed, right? They get paralyzed by um, no sound. Just checking, um, testing, testing. <laughs> Testing, testing. Is everyone able to hear me now? Is it better or is it too loud? Okay, it's better. Cool, cool. But no, now no, it's not. Is it okay? Better. Yeah, so I, Okay, okay, cool. Uh, maybe I'll speak at this level over here. It's weird. I get a proper mic and it gives me so much, so much trouble sometimes. It's crazy um but yeah so the the wyckoff trading strategy right effective right um 
I personally think it, it overcomplicates a lot of things. Um, it overcomplicates. Oh, frick, man. Let me see how I can uh, plug in another mic to see. Give me a second, guys. Give me a second, guys. Let, 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 let me solve this. Um, let, let, let me sort this out. Give me a second. Testing, testing. Let me just maybe I do. Testing, testing. How about now? Is now okay? Okay. If it disappears one more time, I will just bring in another mic that I have outside and I'll plug it in, right? Uh, not as fancy, but probably more effective. Sorry about that, right? Um, it's weird that the, the mic is causing so much trouble. Okay. Okay, cool, guys. Let's begin. The, the moment you notice that there's something wrong, let me know. I am literally watching the, the chat over here, right? So yeah, if, it, if there's any problems, let me know. I will swap it out. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, the Wyckoff training strategy really good, but um, sometimes they overcomplicate it, right? So I uh, today's session will give you a good introduction and also my pro my professional kind of take on on uh, how you can better apply it in trading, right? Yeah, just don't touch the mic. I'm not gonna touch the mic now. Okay. Um, so let me see. Am I soft now? I, it seems like I'm quite soft, right? It's okay. It's okay. All right. I do want to point you guys to one place first, right? Uh, Tick Mill Traders Club. If you guys are not in it already, please go check it out. I'm gonna put it and copy and paste it over here, right? So this new um, Traders Club that they are launching, right? In there, in the Traders Club, you get direct access to me uh, and, my, and the team of traders around here, right? We'll share our trading ideas in there, right? Uh, you'll be able to ask, I think with $100, you'll be able to get access. Uh, but the more funds you put in, the different levels of access you get into the Tick Mill Traders Club. Really nice place just to hang out with me and um, the other fellow traders, right? We're trying to build the community over there. And of course, if you have questions when it comes to like trading, when you have questions when it comes to uh, technical analysis, you can ask me and the team there, right? You find me and the team, Patrick and James all in there. All you need to go do is to open, um, as long as you have a Tick Mill account, Right, as long uh, when you register, you get direct access into it. Okay, so um, go check it out. I think it's a pretty good place. Right, I will show you guys in a bit how it looks like. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a good place for you to practice your uh, practice your analysis and um, kind of hone your trading skills. Uh, so that I can, you know, sometimes when you you're wondering if you draw a support or resistance right trend line right. Fibonacci right. This is the place where you can literally come in. Right, um, I'll just load it separately. Right. Yeah. This is a place where you can come in and you can ask me the questions. All right. Just give me a second for, for me to uh, uh, rearrange my screens a bit. Okay. And I'll show you guys, I'll uh, give you guys a glimpse into that later. But without further ado, let's begin uh, today's session. All right. Let's begin today's session. I do want to just jump over to the PowerPoint here for you. Oh, actually, the, the, the Traders Club is ready now. I'm just going to show you how it looks like. In the Tick Mill Traders Club, this is how it looks like, right? Um, nice place. You will have access to all these channels if you have a live Tick Mill account, a funded Tick Mill account, all right? The nice little thing that you can do here is like, I'm technically in a trade on Kiwi Dollar now. I'm selling Kiwi, Kiwi Dollar, right? You can come in here, right? And you can, I can show you the handy little thing that you can do, right? Let's just say you're looking at a larger time frame over here and you're thinking, hmm, looks like you could sell from here, right? You draw this line over here and you can say, hey, um, hey Desmond, hey Desmond, I, do you think this is a good um, resistance level? What is the resistance level you're referring to? You highlight this, you click on this, and you select the object that you just drew, okay? 
when you send the message through, right, and if I'm reading it for the first time, or if any of the other traders are reading it, all they need to do is to hover the mouse over it. Hey, Desmond, do you think this is a good resistance level? And you notice that it lights up on the chart exactly. So I know exactly uh, which line you're referring to. Is it a trend line? Is it a support and resistance line? Is it a Fibonacci line? Right? I, it's all, you know, um, it's, it's very, very clear. Go into view discussion, nice little dedicated discussion area. I can just say that. Oh, sorry. Uh, I can just say that. All right. This is also in line with the big 23%. Yeah. It is also in line with the big 23.6% Fibonacci retracement. What is the 23.6 Fibonacci retracement? Click on this, select this specific, uh, sorry, not this, this specific 23%, and I send it through. Right, so you notice when you hover it, it lights up, the 23% lights up, and you know exactly what I'm referring to, right? So it's a really great place for you to learn how to be a better trader, right? Um, yep, you said, uh, not only to be a better trader, I do share my trading ideas in there too. And of course, if you have questions, especially on how to do technical analysis, this is a place that you want to be because I can answer you and can guide you uh, to, um, to not only learn, but apply technical analysis properly. Okay, yeah, but anyway, that's a tick meal traders cup. Um, Emmanuel, I have a bad question. Reserve it for the. Uh, oh, it's not. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, uh, that question. Leave it for the um uh, for the, uh, sorry uh for the support team. Okay, now on to today's session. Right, I realized that the, uh, we're on to here. Um, uh, Wyckoff strategy. A little bit about me for those of you guys who are here for the first time right my name is desmond leong i run the award-winning research firm everest fortune group and also the forex army right i'm one of the chief analysts at uh take meal right i'm a finalist for best fx research and equity research 2019 2020 2021 we have uh, uh uh we work with many of the major financial institutions but with a special partnership with take meal where we're bringing guys the good stuff the juicy stuff and the stuff that take a trading to the next level okay guys now, uh, what we're going to cover today, right? What we're going to cover today, I'm just going to have my handy dandy little pen over here. Is that firstly, yeah, what is the Wyckoff method, right? It is a very popular trading method, but sometimes I feel it's a little bit overcomplicated. Uh, I will show you how it looks like when you try to break it down, all right? Um, what accumulation and distributions mean. They have accumulation, distribution, markup, and markdown, right? So it's like ranging, 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 markup, ranging, 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 markdown in a super simplified version, right? Um, I'll, show you, I'll tell you how to trade it because remember in trading guys, we are not trading for the sake of trading, right? We are not learning a method and approach to trading just to, just to, just for the fun of it. Ultimately, we are doing that to make money, right? We must always um, remember that, right? We are learning all this ultimately to apply it properly and effectively to make money not just to learn it, right? It's good that we learn it a bit, but if you learn it and become an unprofitable trader, that defeats the whole point and purpose of learning it. Okay, guys? So I'm gonna show you how it works and I'm gonna show you how I trade it, right? How I use this kind of accumulation and distribution, how I use support and resistance to really, um, take, uh, to really trade it properly, okay? Now, um, a few things that you guys need to know about the, uh, yeah, what is the Wyckoff method? There are four things that you need to know about the Wyckoff method accumulation, distribution, reaccumulation, re redistribution. The main money is technically made, you know, when you're accumulating, then it shoots up, right? It has certain rules that, you know, oh, it shoots up or maybe it shoots up, retrace and then continue going up. Then there's a little bit of what they call distribution, right? And then um, it shoots down and it shoots down like that. What you want to take note of, right, is that they're usually looking at a range, right? They're looking for what we call a breakout trade and they're looking for uh, 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 basically breakout trades. Okay, in trading, there are two kinds, right? Two kinds of ways to trade. There is the contrarian strategy, right? The contrarian strategy means that if you have a support line over here, right? Price is over here now. Price is over here. If price drops to the support line, right? And it goes down and it goes down and it goes down and it touches this support line, it can do two things. It can bounce or you can break out 
okay a contrarian strategy is what we call where you're playing against the movement of the trend right where is my mouse so you're looking for a bounce in this uh, a, a reversal this is called contrarian right there's there's the other version where price comes all the way down and it comes down and then it breaks out okay this is called breakout train notice there's always two different things right one is your playing in the direction of the trend expecting price to go lower one you're playing the reversal right the Wyckoff method is more towards a breakout method okay it's a breakout method now uh, the effectiveness of a breakout method is tricky I'll be sharing with you a few ways that I've used correlation to avoid the fake outs a lot of us here right a lot of us here have encountered some form of a fake out before we think that oh wow price has broke out of this level I'm going to play uh, maybe I'm going to buy because it looks like it's a bullish breakout right but suddenly the market turns around and it stops you out right and you're like oh shoots man what happened right so this happens a lot in the Wyckoff method right meaning because they're trying to play the breakout um, it can you it put probably put you in a lot of situations where you think that price is going down and then it reverses and then it stops you out and you're like what in the world just happened okay so i'll teach i'll be teaching you some advanced method which is not part of the wyckoff method on how to avoid avoid fake outs because what you notice about the wyckoff method is that this is the money making part right this is the money making part over here right this is the money making part where um after a period of accumulation it breaks out you're looking to play the breakout you're looking to play the breakdown mm -hmm. right so it's primarily uh, a breakout trading strategy so it's not a contrarian strategy right but it's a breakout trading strategy it does technically to a certain extent combine a bit of both right so you guys probably would have heard about it before right when you had uh you know let's just say over here right looking at price go up and down in a range it finally break out but instead of buying right away you wait for the pullback right you wait for the pullback before buying so this you know you look for price to pull back before playing the bounce right so you notice this is a little bit of um contrarian strategy a smaller contrarian strategy built within a larger breakout strategy right so this is one of the better ways the downside right downside is that you might miss out some of the trades right mm -hmm. downside is that you know price might just take off in this direction and it don't even allow you to retrace enough to get in here so that is one of the downsides of um of this you get into technically better positions if you can get in right but the problem is that you know if it doesn't reverse back there you're like oh man i completely missed a move that i've been waiting like three months for okay so i will be showing you how i was showing you how you know you can avoid some of these um fake outs when price actually makes a breakout you know is it real or is it fake right and how you can um leverage on this upon a resistance all right jawad i see you raising your hand if you have questions i forgot to remind you guys right feel free to send the questions through right away okay i have a literally another screen open here uh ready to answer your questions because trust me i guarantee we might not have time to answer all the questions at the end of the session so send it through out if it's relevant i'll try to answer it along the way all right we got a question from johan right johan i recommend that if you have a question you address it to everyone not just hosts and analysts uh hosts and panelists right so everyone can see it too on which time frame do you look at that in general right so usually i look at a one day time frame and a four hour time frame right the reason for that right i will just jump into the charts to show you a little bit more about what I... now there is this broad concept of known unknowns all right known unknowns are what we call we know it's coming but we do not know the outcome right we know it's coming but we do not know the outcome so uh for example the non-farm payroll that just passed on friday we knew was coming all right we knew that on friday at this time specifically there will be a non-farm payroll but we do not know the outcome the problem with the known unknowns is that it really messes up your trading strategy meaning that your wyckoff method your elliott wave method your hearse cycles your harmonics you can have all the right um things lining up but if a news event and anomaly messes it up right it will really really um makes things um ineffective let me show you what i mean right um so uh ezra i'll be actually answering the question right now let me show you what i mean okay so well over here 
All right, well, over here, and let's just say one of the, sorry, let me just close this off. One of the trades that worked very nicely, um, I think it was a Kiwi dollar trade that worked quite nicely. Or was it a Euro dollar trade? Yeah, Euro dollar trade, Euro. Okay, for example, Um, Sebastian is asking an interesting question. Use AI technology to capture all this moment, or it's only manual entries. We, I, I'm not sure. Um, what do you exactly mean by that? Could you clarify a little bit more, Sebastian? Right. Um, but I'll be answering what is a um, you know we got a question. What's the best time? What's the best time frame to use? Right. Let me answer this question. Right. So for example, we are on the one euro dollar let's just go into the one minute time frame right one minute time frame we go to settings and i will show you the events on the chart uh economic events on the chart and we go bam all right sorry um There we go. This non-farm payroll, right? When the non-farm payroll occurred, can you see this was the movement of the non-farm payroll, right? It caused this massive movement over here. We all can agree that this really, really shook things up a bit, right? We all can agree. It's, um, it's a big move, right? So if you were planning whatever, like um, maybe you're playing a trend line, all right, like for example, maybe you are playing a trend line. All right, price is on a ascending trend, right? We are probably going to buy, right? Okay, you know, things are good, right? You know, it looks really, really nice. We play it this way. Oh, what the heck? Yeah, we play it this way. Suddenly, the non farm payroll comes, right? The non farm payroll happens right about here, right? And all your analysis, right? Your trend lines, maybe you're doing a trend line, maybe you're doing some form of a channel trend line channel uh maybe a little bit of fibonacci over here you got a nice 61.8 retracement all right nice 61.8 retracement you got a nice overlap kind of support all lining up very nicely to saying that price is gonna rise okay um the price is gonna rise and suddenly non-farm payroll comes and your really really good analysis gets smashed all right basically it gets thrown out the window right it's, it's not great at all right so this is the thing with known unknowns right so on the smaller time frame one minute time frame right you notice how the impact of these news events can really mess things up for you right so on the five minute chart we can go back to the same thing here five minute chart bam you know you have all your analysis saying why price is going to do well and then this news event comes non-farm payroll comes smashes your trading idea what you thought was going to be a bullish trade ends up, you know, uh, you were thinking, all right, we got, let's just say you do a little bit of Wyckoff, right? We got a nice little bit of um, uh, accumulation phase over here, breakout, reaccumulation. Um, you know, some people, I, I won't dive too much into it, but yeah, you know, finally breakout, making a pullback, it should be going up. Suddenly, bam, it comes all the way down because of a news event. So your question that you guys have is which time frame should i use you should use the time frame especially when you are using such methodology right you should use the time frame that is at least sensitive right or is immune to um this kind of non-farm payroll events a uh, big news events i'm gonna put this line over here uh for non-farm payroll right this non-farm payroll happened at this specific point okay I, i've just drew a, a a vertical line to highlight this if i went into the one hour chart you notice that the one hour chart, you can still arguably say that this was a pretty big candle, right? If you look at it over here, I'm oh, sorry. If you look at it over here, you can say, yeah, it's a pretty big candle. Wow, you know, um, it's still a pretty big candle compared to other candles. But the moment you hit the four hour time frame, right? The moment you hit the four hour time frame, right? You notice that this candle, right? This candle over here, this red one over here, which is when the non-farm payroll happened, I'm going to maybe circle it for you guys. This candle over here looks like any other normal candle in the bigger trend, right? You'll be thinking, wait, did non-farm payroll really happen? Because, you know, there's these candles here, there's these big candles, there's this big candle. You know, it just looks like any other normal candle in the chart, right, that you have. 
right? You wouldn't, uh, and this is because the higher time frame you go, the more immune your trading strategy is uh, to big news events that can mess things up, right? So the non-farm payroll on the one minute time frame uh, would really, really mess you up like this, right? It takes up half the chart, wipes you out, but on the higher time frame, the four hour chart, it just looks like a tiny little candle there that didn't really affect your trading strategy, right? And of course, you've gone to the one day time frame, right? You go into one day time frame, that news event is just here. You know, you don't even notice it. You're like, wait, did something happen, right? I heard something, but I'm not sure. Um, I know the non farm payroll happened, but because I'm trading on the four hour and one day time frame, I am immune to the to the movement. So you see, guys, right? With um, with the Wyckoff trading strategy, with the um, uh, Elliott Wave with a lot of these other trading strategies, you want to be immune to news events. You want to be immune to the, to the impact of news events because you can do the best analysis in the world. You can count the accumulation, the distribution, you can count up and down, right? The selling climax, the selling test and everything. But the moment a big news event comes when you place a trade, bam, you're gone, right? Because the news event is unpredictable. We know it's coming, guys. We know it's coming, right? Just go to um, economic news calendar. Let's go to economic news calendar, right? You go to my favorite, maybe uh, trading economics or whatever it is, right? And you can see the news events coming, right? You know it's coming, but you do not know the outcome, right? And that's the danger because this randomness that you put into your trading strategy will mess you up, will mess the trading strategy up. So you want to move to a time frame where you're a little bit more um, immune to that. And for that to happen, right? For that to happen, usually it is the four hour time frame and the one day time frame where you are a little bit more immune to your uh to the big news events. Okay. So yeah, um uh, what time frame actually works well for this? Four hours, sweet spot, one day time frame. Lowest I would go is one hour time frame. Even one hour time frame is a little bit risky. I would try to go for like the four hours time frame minimally. Okay. Um question for Sebastian. Uh the breakouts, all these kind of breakouts, um, I think uh, trading view, um, there are some MT4, MT5 indicators that try to capture it, but man, they do a terrible job at it, right? So usually you can use some of like, these indicators online to find um, the first idea, right? To highlight that, oh, hey, you know, there might be a, there might be a, um, there might be something coming, right? There might be a, uh, a breakout, then you use your own filtering to decide because I cannot say for certain that I've seen a good support or resistance indicator, a supply and demand uh, accumulation distribution indicator, right? It's a little bit too subjective. Until we can really, really use AI to map out the, the patterns, right? Image recognition, right? I think the safest bet for now, right? The safest bet for now is to use, uh, to use it as a semi automated AI way. So you, you you let the indicator tell you and then you do your own little checking, okay? Um, uh, but, but that low momentum, um, yes, all right. Um, we'll go into that later, Vincent. Okay, um, now back to back to our session, all right? Back to our session over here, all right? Um, bam, all right? Wyckoff, you know, is considered one of the five titans of technical analysis. We've got the gun angles, we've got Elliott Wave, we've got the Dow, you know, we've got Merrill, Merrill Lynch, right? These big guys wrote and edited the magazine Wall Street, you know, founded the Stock Market Institute School. Smart guy. Um, I think there's a lot that we can learn from him, but I will be sharing with you my opinions on um, uh, on how I have used what he has taught, right? To teach, uh, to trade profitably, right? I use a lot of different methods, right? I came from, my background is in like, um, institutional research, right? We literally advise the largest banks, you know, um, largest banks in the world on how to use technical analysis, right? So I have that strong background and that's why I feel like I can, you know, provide some meaningful insights into how he does it. There's this idea of the composite man when it comes to um, a Wyckoff, right? Composite man is basically this guy, you know, it's like Neo in the matrix or maybe Agent Smith. Right, it's an invisible hand that tries to manipulate the market. Now, I am, uh, I mean, 
I don't think the market is, uh, I understand the concept of smart money. I understand why there might be traps here and there, but I don't necessarily buy into the whole bigger concept of like um, market manipulation, right? Um, but it, I, I, you, you, can, you can see the patterns there and I can understand why some people would think there's market manipulation, but instead it's actually a case, um, especially for stuff like Forex or really, really liquid um, stocks, very, very low chance that there can be market manipulation. You need to be like a gazillion dollars trader to really move the markets that much, right? Um, but setting traps and the traders collectively knowing that I'll be sharing with you the psychology behind it, okay? So, uh, Wyckoff price cycle, very simple, right? We've got the accumulation area, you've got the markup, right? You've got the distribution area, Oh, sorry, my mouse is a bit wonky. And you got the markdown, right? The markdown is where you make you sell. The markup is where you make money, right? So you ultimately make money buying and you make money selling, okay? It's on how you identify this accumulation area and this distribution area that determines how profitable you are going to be when you use the Wyckoff trading strategy. So this is the more uh, complex way of looking at it, right? So you talk about like, um, where's my mouse, right? So you have this part here, like the accumulation, like I said, accumulation usually uh, in a little bit of a range, as you can see a little bit of a range, they have some um, rules over here. You have a selling climax, which, you know, if this is a range, the selling climax happened before, you know, so it, it went even lower than the range, right? After it ranges, it has this low volume field sell off where people think it's gonna, uh, break out. It doesn't break out successfully, right? People think it's gonna go down, but it's a field sell off, bounce up, then it goes up. You look to come down, jump the creek, right? And you look to get in on this part to play the trade, right? So it's um, this is the concept of the um, uh, this is the concept of basically um, Wyckoff logic. Technically, you could you could, you could consider this as a range too, right? You know, um, you got one part of a range over here. Uh, you got the fake off, right? Usually, it's like a pin bar that looks very very nice. People think it's going to break out, right? It's going to go lower, but instead it comes up, right? So this is the accumulation phase, markup phase, distribution, markdown. I will be showing. So the distribution phase, right, is just the opposite, right? It's the opposite of the accumulation phase. It goes all the way up goes to make a nice little high they call it a buying climax right it comes down it forms a little bit of a range as you can see pretends to break out doesn't break out and then it comes down and you know this is the part where it, what i mentioned you know you 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 play on the pullback to come down okay and it's uh, essentially making the money now what you notice the most important thing that you have to take note of over here is this um let me see, uh, how do I highlight a particular area? The most important thing, right, is, is this, right, is this, right? You are looking to play the pullback, right? You're looking to play the pullback and ideally a pullback to a nice little support level and a pullback to a nice little resistance level, okay? Right, you can actually throw in a Fibonacci retracement from here all the way up to here, maybe 38% retracement, right? Maybe you got 100% projection here, 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 right? You got a bullish Ichimoku cloud, right? Maybe you have, uh, you know, it looks like a wave one, two, three, four, five in the Elliott wave theory, right? You can take a Fibonacci retracement from here to here, 23% retracement come down. Sounds complicated. I'll show you what I mean, right? How did I manage to implement this effectively to hit my trading competition um, target in one day? Actually, it's one and a half days, right? And um, um, you know, and pass it, right? With almost zero percent drawdown, right? I do this on a consistent basis. I mean, there are days that I lose money, there are days that I make money, right? But um, very consistently making money. How does this happen, right? It's actually it's not the 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 key thing that I want to let you guys know. If anything, is that it's not a single trading strategy. It's not a single study, Wyckoff method, Elliott Wave method, right? Harmonics. It's not a single one that will help you be a profitable trader, but it's a combination of them, right? A combination of indicators and approaches that really, really help you be a profitable trader. Okay, the closest I think technically is 
harmonics is not bad, right? A lot of Fibonacci there, right? But harmonics alone is not going to make you money. You need to train support and resistance. You need to train supply and demand. You need to train a lot more Fibonacci and market structure correlation. Let me show you guys. Okay. Um, okay. Never mind. Uh, let, let me let me just may pull up a chart for you guys over here, right? Let me just pull up a chart for you guys and see if I have an example, right? I think I called the move on DXY previously for price to bounce, right? Um, for price to bounce from here. I will give me a while. I just need to. Let me find that thing here. How do I remove the... Okay, that, that's a little bit neater. Okay, so one of the traits, right? One of the traits, maybe I can... Um, let me see if I have an example for you guys over here. Um, I can show you one of the traits that I took, right? Um, Give me a second while I take a screenshot of it, right uh, here. I can't show too much, but yeah, um, maybe I'll just show you guys this part. Right? I know it's a little bit hard to see, um, might be a little bit hard to see in terms of the the PNL target, but I will show you one of the, oh man, I took a screenshot of that too, right? Um, I'll show you the trade that we took that made about four percent, and I'll show you how it actually uh, how it actually works. Okay, the concept behind it. So I need to show you guys this thing. Okay, for example, this is a recent trade uh, that I took. Right, that helped me pass the um, the little trading competition one day. You will notice uh, Kiwi Dollar. We had a sell, a sell on Kiwi Dollar at the price of zero point. Uh, what is this? Um, five nine nine zero, right? And TP five nine two six, right? Okay, the trades did work out pretty nicely. Almost uh, um, they give us thirty five days to complete it. Complete it almost like five trades. Now this is the part zero point five nine nine zero. Okay, zero point five nine nine zero is about here. So just let me delete the things over here. Five nine nine zero is about here. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see. Let me see if I increase the size of the numbers by the side, right? Maybe I put it as 24. Okay, yeah, 5990 is about here. We took the trade right about over here. And for price to drop all the way down to hit the target. Now, first things first, on the daily time frame. On the daily time frame, we took this trade. Okay, we took this trade over here, and this was the exact time we took it right about here on the 10th, uh, 29th, right? So you notice on the four hour time frame, for our time frame, you have been very tempted to think that price is going to, price is actually making a breakout pullback and is going to take off in this direction, right? That is That was a big danger. A lot of people were looking at this on the smaller time frame and they say, yeah, you know, wow, it's a very, very nice level, right? There's a Wyckoff thing here, right? It's a little bit of Wyckoff, you know, price, uh, make a selling climax over here, right? And then it comes down and then it looks like it made um, another low, right? And so this was a fake sell off, maybe come down, it break out, this was a pullback and it will be taking off, right? So a lot of people were thinking that price is going to take off in this case, right? And if you use Wyckoff trading strategy alone, you would think that this would be the perfect pullback to play uh, the move upwards. But why did we not fall for that? And why did we instead sell from here um, to play it down and hit our take profit target over here? Now, how that works is because firstly, on the, the higher time frame always takes precedence. On the forward time frame, it looks like a breakout over here, right? But if you look at a one day time frame, that breakout looks like that breakout just looks like on the higher time frame as a long week on the chart. So you need to tell yourself that even though on the smaller time frame it looks like a breakout, right? It looks like price might be breaking up bullish, have a bullish breakout, but on the larger time frame, it actually is forming a super duper nice um, um, price action that uh, reversal, uh, price action reversal, um, that you know price might reverse from there, 
that's the first thing always reference the higher time frame don't just look at a single time frame if you ever always if you look at a single time frame all the time it'll set you up for um what i call tunnel trading where you know you're so engrossed with one single analysis that you don't realize that everything around you is pointing to a different direction it's like trying to um it's, it's dangerous right so always look at a higher time frame the second reason right the second reason why we didn't play a breakout here according to the white cough method um just give me a second I'm losing a little bit of my voice the second reason that we didn't play a breakout here according to the white cough method is because if you look at it here at price what was dxy doing right dxy um, which is the measure of dollar strength was actually on a very strong uptrend uh, bullish i think it's a bullish um, channel was in a very strong bullish channel right price was right about making a very strong pullback to this support level so it was this level over here right so we are thinking that you know the usd would be strengthening if the usd strengthened technically kiwi dollar would weaken right kiwi dollar will weaken so we not only use a higher time frame right so i'm going to write it over here we're not only using a higher time frame a higher time frame but we also use correlation right correlation sorry uh, both higher time frame and correlation that tells us that this might actually be a reversal that we're looking at instead okay then we did some uh, basic support and resistance right very nice uh, what we call pullback resistance here a lot of people were very very excited that they were seeing something like a double bottom over here and then price breaking out a lot of people are very um, bullish that on the four hour chart it looks like a wyckoff um big sell off over here they call it the markdown right selling climax you know come down to test again right come up pull back right break the ice or break the markdown and then it shoots up you know playing the markup right but if you know how to apply in this case you know higher time frame and correlation at the same time Aussie dollar was breaking Aussie dollar is breaking and looks like it was going lower you know that Aussie dollar and Kiwi dollar tend to go hand in hand right so a lot of it was pointing that price will reverse instead right so if you use the Wyckoff method purely in this instance uh you have been in for a pretty bad time right you you, uh, you probably be losing money over there but instead what we did is we use uh correlation and higher time frame and basic support and resistance and Fibonacci so I'm going to show you what, what allowed us to take the trade. We've had a nice resistance level. We had, I think this price was on a big 23% retracement, as you can see over here, right? There was general bearish undertones, right? The markets was going lower. DXY was bullish, means that uh, dollar frank, uh, dollar, uh, Kiwi dollar is bearish, right? Really nice overlap resistance over here. Really nice overlap resistance. And we played the move down just to the key support level over here. Price touch it, hit the target. And if you know how to manage your trade properly, we got one is to four risk to reward. So 4% for the 1% risk. I think uh, we have it over here, right? You can see this was the trade. I know it's a little bit hard to see Kiwi dollar over here, right? $4,242, right? Almost 4% 4 on that one trade. Um, selling at 5990 and um, on the 10th, on the 3rd of October, right? On the 3rd of, on the 2nd of October and closing on the 3rd of October. A really nice trade and it helped us, of course, um, hit our uh, hit our targets over here, um, contributed to almost half our, um, our profit target, okay? Now, of course, in this case, right, this is how you um, uh, use support and resistance, right? Ultimately, a lot of what Wyckoff teaches, right? I'm going to show it to you over here. Uh, a lot of what Wyckoff, sorry. A lot of what Wyckoff teaches, I highlight is this thing here. You're playing the breakout. You're playing the breakout, right? How do you improve your chances of playing the breakout um, properly, right? Correctly, making money on the breakout, okay? Um, that is the part where uh, I will need to show you what I mean, right? Firstly, you draw significant swings, right? Significant swing high, swing low, significant swing high. To be able to draw um, support and resistance properly, you need to know how to draw swings, okay? Next thing, you want to look for multiple swings, right? When you draw a swing high, try to see how far back you can go to find, uh, to find um, 
it doesn't need to be exactly at the same level, but you want to try to drag it as far back as possible and see what is the area that you're looking at. This area will form the basis of your accumulation and distribution. All right, the further back you can draw, the more the accumulation is, right? So that is a simple way to look at Wyckoff, right? Um, of course, Wyckoff method, right, does not just um, look at a single level, right? Does not look at just one, one level. You are ideally looking for a whole range, as you can see over here, right? So this case, right, you got a nice little bit of a range over here, uh, range over here. This case um, over here, I think the range might have been about over here, about over here, right? So um, that is the first thing that you need to know, right? How to establish your multi-swing high and multi-swing low levels, right? I don't want to confuse you with too much terminology, but for example, if I were to draw this again, if I were to draw a resistance over here, right? I'm going to make it slightly thicker so you guys can see it. I could drag it further back and say, oh, okay, it can be here. I can drag it even further back. Okay, it's here. Right? And I can say, yeah, this would then form part of the range. Same thing for the support. You can put it over here. Right? You can see, okay, it's over here and over here. I can drag. How far back can I drag it? Right? That's the important thing when you're doing uh, Wyckoff. You are finding a range, but you're essentially, essentially, if you think about it, right, you are finding like you are finding a range. You're finding swing highs and swing lows. So as you can see, you're basically finding how far back your swing high, how far back your swing low can go, right? I think as long as you go two to three, um, maybe even four, right, is even better. The further back it goes, the better. But don't stop at one, right? One, I don't think is enough. You should at least have minimally two over here, right, uh, for, for your Wyckoff strategy to be, um, um, I would say, stable. Okay, now the next thing, psychology of the pullback. So let's just say we draw a resistance level, okay? And it goes all the way, all the way, all the way back here. Nice little bit of resistance level, right? Price is coming down, coming down, coming up, right? And it finally breaks out, right? So you notice, right, in the Wyckoff method, we are looking for price to break out and come back come back to this part over here. This is what they call the pullback. They call it jump the creek. They call it break the ice, whatever the hell they call it, right? It's basically a simple way of saying the pullback. You're looking at the pullback. Now, why does this pullback, what is the effectiveness of this pullback? Why is it so strong, right? So let me explain to you the psychology. If you were selling one time, you sell, oh, you know, price reverse, oh, making good money. Price comes back up to here, you're like, easy money just sell right sell sure now when price comes here and you decide to sell but it doesn't go down and it continues going up what do you think is going through the minds of these traders right they will be saying oh man right this is terrible price is going up it's going up it's going up right i will never trade again oh my goodness i can't believe i made this i should have used a stop loss i should have used proper risk management, they are in for a roller coaster, they can't sleep at night, right? And the price is almost blowing up the entire account and it starts going down and they're like, you know, they start accepting religion, you know, they start praying, they're like, oh, you know, just pretty bring price down, right? They're in for a nightmare, right? And price goes lower and lower and lower and lower. And it finally comes back to the place where it broke out from. What do you think these guys who went through the entire spectrum of emotions, right, would be doing? They would be getting rid of their selling positions. They would be saying, forget it. I'm going to close my short position. To close your short position, you need to buy, right? Meaning, and that is why there's an influx of people buying that causes the bounce, the pullback bounce. Nothing so fancy about the concept of what breaking the ice or, or something like that. This is the concept of the breakout, right? You need to find a level where many, many people keep repeatedly thinking that price will go down, right? Everyone thinks that it's going to go down, it's going to go down, it doesn't go down and it shoots up. That is where you have people holding onto their trades and they're panicking. And the moment they get the chance to get out and break even, that is where they get out. And you know you see the bounce that happens. So that is the psychology of the pullback, right? It's the same thing that you notice for um, support, right? So 
Um, he also has the same thing over here. You notice bounce, bounce, bounce. You're looking at a lot of bounces. Price breaks out, what they call break the ice, comes back up and then drops down, right? So you're getting on the pullback as you can see over here. Same thing over here, right? Price bounce one time, price bounce the second time, bounce three times, looking really good, right? I uh, expect price to bounce again. Next time price comes down here, people are expecting it to bounce and they are buying right they are buying with the expectancy that price will bounce price doesn't bounce price drops they're in for a roller coaster of a time right goes all the way down they panic 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 they start questioning the purpose of trading they'll say they never trade again and when price finally comes back up here what they're gonna do they're gonna get rid of their buying position by selling and when they sell price comes down you have bearish pressure pushing prices down, right? That's the psychology of the pullback. That is why you notice that when there's a period of accumulation, a period of distribution, you're looking to get in on the pullback. That is the psychology of it. Wyckoff did not coin it, right? Wyckoff, uh, uh, these pullbacks exist long before Wyckoff actually um, call it the accumulation or distribution phase, but it's the psychology of the pullback. Now, when this happens, right? um naturally you are um uh you are quite well positioned to to play the pullback right like you know you instead of getting out here and price coming back here and then uh you know you you try to play the move out initially over here right that is a danger because you you don't have the pullback that happened first right so you price sometimes sometimes price goes all the way down you know goes all the way down as you can see you might be lucky in the sense, but for those of you guys who want to control your luck, how do you know if a breakout really happens? That is where I will introduce to you the concept of correlation, right? So we got something here, you know, we got, let's just say, I look at um, Euro dollar, right? I look at Euro dollar, I click this little plus button and I look at dollar franc, uh, dollar franc. What do you notice? You notice that these two instruments move in opposite direction. One goes up, the other comes down, right? One goes up, the other comes down. One goes up, down, one goes down, up, right? So this is what we call negative correlation. One goes down as you can see, one goes up as you can see. This is called negative correlation. You notice that the markets, right, are just like, you know, draw a mirror in between, right? It kind of just reflects like, when one like goes down and up here, one goes up and down here. This is what we call negative correlation. Okay, a negative correlation. Now, how can you use this to your advantage? Right. Firstly, 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 right. Um, the webinar is going to end in five minutes. Right, Anthony. Right. I hope you're enjoying it, by the way. Right. Uh, but yes. Um, firstly, you can use this thing called correlation coefficient. Right. Co correlation coefficient. Right. Let's show up if I'm a euro dollar. Um. And I load up a dollar franc, right? Bam, as you can see over here, right? If the correlation is usually negative, right? You can see it's close to negative one. It means that it is quite strongly negatively correlated, right? So you know that they move in opposite directions. How can you use this to your advantage, guys? How can you use this to your advantage? Let me show you how you can use this to your advantage to avoid false breakouts, okay? Um, to avoid false breakouts. Now, we are looking at, I'm going, to, I'm going to plus, I'm going to, a new pane, there we go. Candles, candles, okay. So as you can see, right, we can see that price uh, is making, looks like price might be making, a bit of a breakout over here, right? It looks like price is broken out. And you're thinking, well, price, is this a real breakout? Is price really breaking out? Then you draw the same line on dollar franc, right? And dollar franc. And you notice that, hey, actually it might be breaking out, right? So if this one says that is a breakout, bullish breakout, and this is a bearish breakout, you will say that check mark, that is great. Things are working. Um, this, you know, it is correct, right? There's nothing wrong here. The problem is when there's a breakout, then maybe in this case, you have another line here and looks like Euro dollar might not be breaking out properly. 
even though dollar franc has clear skies, the next level you can go to is all the way here, right? Euro dollar is stuck with this, um, this support level that's in the middle of nowhere, right? So you might not be able to have a breakout. So a successful breakout happens when you have two things that are in alignment. Uh, unsuccess, um, an unsuccessful breakout happens if one looks like it's gonna break out, as you can see over here, but the other one looks like, hey, wait a second, something is wrong. Okay, so that is how you do, uh, that's how you use correlation, right? Just put the chart side by side and you see, okay, if you think about logically, right? If Euro dollar is gonna break out and dollar franc, which is moves literally in the opposite direction all the time. One goes up, the other goes down. One goes down, the other goes up, right? So if Euro dollar is having a bullish breakout, technically, dollar French should have a bearish breakout. Now, if they both agree with each other, that's good, that's great, right? Um, a breakout should be successful. But if one looks like it's breakout, but the other one is not, then you'll be saying, hey, wait, 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 wait a holy second, right? Something is a little bit tricky, right? Um, it might not be correct, okay? One would be wrong, right? So that is the part where uh, you use correlation to say, all right, maybe I state because you know it can be a uh, fake out okay right i i know anthony it can be very technical uh, this is advanced topic wyckoff is advanced topic support resistance is advanced topic but i do want to let you know that do not give up do not do not lose heart i am a living testament i'm a young guy i'm just what 30 uh, 33 years old right <laughs> uh, 33 years old right i have my own family my own kid right you can trade full-time for a living right all you need to do is to do it well okay right uh you need to learn from the right people right the worst thing is to learn you know that's a that's a dangerous thing about trading right you can actually learn the wrong stuff it's different from like you know when when, when we're studying in university or studying in school in school you have a textbook you read it you you know it's going to be correct and you know your exam will be tested on that and you know when you answer it and you're going to get it correct but in trading it's very different from the world of academia you can read you can spend hours watching YouTube videos, but you can be learning from the wrong guy who doesn't know how to teach you, and you end up blowing your account. Okay, so that's the yeah, <laughs> um, so that is the important thing to take note of over here, right? Um, guys, yeah, I want to chat me privately. You can go to Take Me Traders Club. I'm in there. You can direct message me. You add mention me. You'll be able to find me in there, right? So yeah, if anything is encouragement, right? Uh, the whole team here, right? Able to build a business, build a life. Um, trading, but you need to learn from the correct people. There are a lot of Instagram traders out there, nice pictures here and there, but they teach you crap, right? Take Mill will bring you guys good stuff, the juicy stuff. My teaching is very technical, right? But I don't hold back. I rather teach you guys the best stuff, the stuff that people might pay ten thousand dollars in a course to teach. But I'm just going to share it to you here. This is how you apply it properly. Don't get too sucked in by all the different kind of marketing gimmicks people have, right? I will show you exactly how you know you can apply it with real proof, with real trading proof, um, or in a profitable trading proof, uh, to show you that you know if you apply it correctly, you know you don't need to be. You don't need a master's in financial engineering or a CFA to be uh, profitable. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, part two of this session. I'll probably arrange a part two of this session next time. Live training session next week, guys. Live training session next week. So just go to Take Me Webinars, right? Um, um, yeah, just go to Take Me Webinars. I think it should be global webinars. Uh, is it seminars? Webinars? Oh, shit. Um, you should be able to find our webinars. I will find it for you guys. And the webinars is here. Okay, there it is, right? You go sign up for our webinars here next week, right? Next week, um, you can find me and my team, right? Uh, 16th of October, right? It's a live trading session. Go check it out. Let me maybe give the link to you guys, right? Go check it out. It's usually Ketan, usually it's, um, if they're not around, it's me, right? Yeah, 16th of October is a live trading session, right? Um, uh, I'll check my mic. Yes, I'll check my mic, man, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, all right. But I hope you enjoyed today's session. Um, now, if I, if you don't mind, I'm just going to launch a quick uh, rate the webinar, right? Um, how you found today's session? One is to five. Five being great, four being not so uh, okay, you know. But if you, I wouldn't hunt you down if you read one or something. But if you do, then let me know. I'll always try to improve it for you guys. But I do want to know how you found today's session. Right. Uh, there are no more webinars this week for me, but I think there are webinars from other guys. Go check it out in this um, in the webinar session over here. 
All right? So go check it out in this Tick Me webinar session. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I think I'm going to end the poll over here. I think we got a good close to 90, 95%. Uh, that rate about five and four stars. Right. So thank you very much. Right. This recording be made, will be made available to you guys. Right. Uh, on the Tick Me YouTube channel. Right. So do check it out. All right. I think it should be made available by the end of this week. Thank you so much for tuning into today's session. I really enjoyed the time with you guys. Right. I hope you found today's session useful. It's very advanced, but let me tell you, no easy money is made learning the basic stuff. All right, guys. It has been a nice time. Right. Chatting with you guys. Thank you. Five stars. Thank you very much. Right. Um, I will answer the question. You can ping me in the Take New Traders Club. I'll do my best to answer it over there. Right. But we're out of time today. See you guys. Trade safe. Stay safe. Peace out. Right. I'll catch you in the next session, guys. Bye bye.